Sorry. All right, well, I'm going to first ask the board if you mind if I show this in a little bit of a different way. Um, there's a bit of a different circumstance with the cable access budget being absorbed by the communications department. So you'll see in this um, at a glance that the budget is up significantly in the communications department from last year. But that really doesn't um, paint the whole picture of where we are. So I'd love to take you through that. I know Kim included this presentation as well as some attachments in your folder if you want to reference them throughout. Um, so the first major change you'll see um, between the communications budget this year and the cable access budget and communications budget last year is by that combination of budgets. So some assumption of duties and responsibilities from cable access that is now being taken care of by um, the communications de department. Um, so you'll see the 15,000 in um, website design and maintenance and that's a um, contractual cost that is annual going towards our next redesign. Um, and then you'll also see that we have capital purchases um, and that goes towards the equipment in this room that we're going to be using to produce our town board meetings, our zoning board meetings, and um, our planning board meetings, as well as equipment that had previously been purchased by cable access to support digital um, efforts. So you'll actually see by the combination of these budgets, that's a cost savings in 2025 of $4,500. So the next slide you'll see is um, the, our second cause of additional staffing and related costs. Yeah, see so the first line you'll see here is part-time personnel, which was formerly $4,000 in the 2024 cable budget. Going, um, looking towards 2025, um, you'll see it's $5,000, and that represents the staff that is being cross-trained to produce town meetings. Um, so currently there's four staff members who have stepped up, and they're, they're really catching on and doing a great job. Um, the benefit of the cross-training is not just to have those extra hands, but it's also to create this organizational knowledge where there's going to be no gaps in knowledge if somebody chooses or has to leave the town or town for any reason. So that's a change of a thousand dollars in 2025. Um, the next line you'll see is probably the most well, definitely the most significant change um, as far as staffing in the communications department. So that's um, the administrative salaries line, and that is to accommodate for a new position, which is a communications assistant position. One of the handouts that I've given you is the roles and responsibilities in the communications department, and that shows my role as director of communications, and on the back side of that, you'll see um, the roles and responsibilities for an additional proposed um, position for communications assistant. But I'd like to highlight some of the roles that that person will be doing and how that's different from the existing position in the communications department. So that's going to be a heavy digital focus. Um, I think we all can agree that we're glued to our phones, we're glued to our devices, and there's a heavy shift in the landscape towards a more digital world. Um, and we can see businesses, nonprofits, and even other um, government entities that are shifting to um, really focusing on digital. So I would love somebody to um, really focus on video production, still photography, um, to enhance our methods and to give us opportunities that currently don't exist with the staffing model that we have. Um, they'll also help in the primary directing of proclamations and certificates and create plans for um, digital and social media. They'll draft articles for our town e newsletter and our Webster Today newsletter um, publication. And they'll also um, be heavily involved in the production of town meetings. Um, you'll see the um, communications director line. So um, that accounts for the step raise as well as um, the um, COLA, but also it, I have put in there the 2024 um, salary that was put in for the cable access programming coordinator. So it really comes out to on department headlines being a savings to the town of $61,608. 
um, along with um, a new hire would come the need for additional computer equipment and licensing, um, which is still a cost savings from what was um, what was budgeted for last year. It's a savings of two hundred dollars, and then similarly the um, communications um, office supplies line has risen, but as a net between cable access and um, uh, the communications department, there still is a savings of $900. And so for the cause of additional staffing and related costs, that's a savings of $21,700. And the final major change, um, I may defer a little bit to Paul here, it is the cable vision fee. Um, you'll see it is no longer in either cable or communications, but in other revenue. And um, it looks like Paul has projected it to be $20,000 more this year than in last year. So I'll let him speak to that line. Yeah, overall, um, that's based on history. We thought it would be trending down rather quickly, but it's really held its own. And uh, it's been coming in higher than more than the budget. So I did bump it up slightly for 2025. Imagine in the future it's going to come down slightly. What exactly is that cable vision fee? Yeah, it's a contractual agreement. We have that uh, charter communications. Uh, it's based on subscriptions to cable TV. Uh, and I think what's happening, their subscribers has reduced, but they keep raising the fee. Mm -hmm. So the amount we get isn't dropping as quickly as we thought it would. Any Webster residents here have cable TV with Spectrum? Look at that guy. Well, I, I, I want a line item right there. I think it's 5% of the franchise fee that was negotiated years ago or whatever. And that line item for all the subscribers in Webster essentially comes to the town of Webster. When the calendar year is over, which in 23 it ended, I think in March of 24, a couple months ago, we got the check, did we not? We did. For the 23 franchise fees, and I think it was 500 and some odd thousand. It was 535. Yeah. yeah. I, I can say that we've been expecting a decrease in that for years. Yes. Yeah. And have not seen it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's 5%. So it's real simple. If you are charging a Spectrum client 100 bucks, that's $5. But if you charge the Spectrum client $200, that's $10. And I think <coughs> because their subscribers are going down at a certain percent, but their fees they're charging to the subscribers is going up at a higher percentage. I hope that it's more of a visual, but that's why we we continue to get the $500,000 for us. Um, that's that. I guess that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Um, and then there are some additional minor changes. So the first cause of that is adjustments based on 2024 actuals. So last year we budgeted for $500 in seminars and conferences under the communications department line. Um, we've budgeted nothing for that line this year, so that's a savings of $500. Whereas last year we had budgeted nothing for um, cellular telephone and um, the 600 projected for next year is just based on actuals from this year. So that's an increase of $100. Um, and then the final, um, final change, as you'll see, is due to the elimination of certain costs from the cable access department. Again, this is minor. Um, there's a savings of $2,700 due to the elimination of the lines um, of $1,200 last year for telephone and internet and 1500 for promotion. Um, so in total, that's a cost savings um, between the two budgets of $28,808, which is a 16.5% savings. Um, so I'd be happy to talk to any more of that. And in addition, I've added an attachment um, just with the communications department being a new department and um, I don't have a fancy um, highway building going up, so there's no tangible building or progress that you're going to be seeing, but I wanted to provide the board with accomplishments for this year that the budget has supported, as well as out, uh, objectives for next year that the budget will support. Um, but 
please feel free to ask me any questions now or um, coordinate with me going forward if you have any questions. Well, Bridget, I think it's totally appropriate that our communications director has got a stellar report with <laughs> communication. It's great, and I really appreciate it. Thanks, Betty. Uh, any questions? Comments? No. Appreciate the handouts.